What's going on guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and we're here with Jim Payne, CEO of Dynacert and Jean-Pierre Colin, Executive Vice President, Director and CFO at Dynacert. It's a pleasure to have both of you gentlemen on today. How are you doing? Oh, great. Thank you, Aaron. Great to hear. So I'm excited to be talking about the company. So can you start by giving us a brief introduction to Dynacert and its mission? For sure. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that we're a proud Canadian company with a global solution to reduce pollution. I know it's a pretty bold statement, but uh, with that, we have patented technology that is, uh, it's electrolyzer where we produce hydrogen on demand and feed measured amounts of hydrogen to an internal combustion engine to enhance the burn. Our target markets have been everything from you know, larger diesel engines, transport trucks, uh, shipping, rail, uh, buses, and things like that. You know, it's it's a technology where uh, we reduce the fuel and some uh, fuel consumption on an average ten to fifteen percent. More importantly, we reduce the emissions or the toxic gases within the emissions north of fifty percent, clear across the board. The NOx, the most deadly gas produced by a diesel engine. We reduce this up to 88%. And it's important to understand that this is all happening right at the source, right at the combustion. We are not a filtration system. You know, there's so many areas today in the world where they've got these filtration systems where we, we don't see the black smoke, we don't see the pollution, but the reality is it's all going back into the atmosphere one way or another at some point. Where with our technology, this is making a significant change right at the source, right at the combustion. Very interesting. So now let's talk a little bit about investment opportunities. So Dynasert recently closed an oversubscribed private placement. What do you attribute this strong investor interest to? And what does the company plan to do with this capital? Well, first of all, uh, we've never had a problem raising capital. I mean, we certainly uh, you know, have a very attractive product and offering to the world. Uh, we've certainly, you know, over the last couple of years, we go back, I mean, just pre-COVID, our stock soared. We were at $1.24. Sales were just taking off. We had just commercialized our product. And then obviously COVID happened, shut us down for over two years. And then what did we face? We faced the global governments pushing EV. Everybody talked EV. That was a road that was a road that everybody was going. Nobody wanted to touch anything. Uh, that has now become a hard reality. That that's not a fact, especially getting into the bigger diesel engines. And our target market is the larger diesel engines. We make such a significant difference in it that it is unbelievable. And it is a product that is available today. This is something that, you know, we're not talking five years down the road, 10 years down the road. This is today. And this is a product that pays for itself, you know, with, within less than a year to the end user. And at the same time, makes such a significant difference in the atmosphere or the environment that we live in. So recently, Dynacert's portfolio company, Cypher Neutron, launched a project with Simon Fraser University. Can you tell us more about this project and its significance for Dynacert? Absolutely. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this over to Jean-Pierre. Uh, Jean-Pierre has been more directly involved with this and certainly has a much better you know, feel on that. So. And thank you, Jim. And um, from full disclosure, I'm also a director of Cypher Neutron. Dinosaur owns 15% of Psychonotron currently and has the ability to go up to 20% by exercising warrants. So part of the significance is financial. Uh, thank you. The side of Fraser University has announced that they will be creating NBC, the largest hydrogen uh, AEM electrolyzer hub. Uh, AEM technology stands for Avion Exchange Membrane Technology. It is the latest and most competitive technology, at least we believe, the most competitive technology to create green hydrogen, uh, which is a potential $150 billion market a year today, or could be up to $150 billion today. It's certainly not that large today, but that that pool of potential market is growing to a trillion dollars in the next uh, 20 years. So it's a high growth market. And by having an equity position in second neutron, what we believe as a corporate strategy, it makes a lot of sense because it's a very high growth business. I'd just like to add real quick to that. I mean, I have always had a strong belief in the hydrogen economy. I've always believed that hydrogen is the future. I think the world is now... Looking at that, Dynacert, we're a 20-year-old company. We're a company with 
years of experience in the hydrogen world, but our hydrogen is currently our technology is a bridge to the hydrogen economy or to the hydrogen future. And so while we are crossing that bridge, although I believe it's a very long bridge with our current technology, we have positioned the company uh, for the longevity of the company and for our shareholders, along with Cypher Neutron for the green hydrogen and the high pressure, high volume hydrogen for the future. So now let's talk market expansion. So you announced a follow-up purchase order of 84 hydrogen units for a leading oil and gas drilling contractor. How does this order impact your market penetration strategy in the oil and gas industry? Now, you look at the oil and gas industry, first of all, you know, that was 84 units. That totaled a total of 103 units. This was a, this was a major uh, drilling company in the oil fields. They bought two units. They tested it, tried it came back and bought 18 more units, then bought another 84 units, and now they're negotiating to outfit their fleets. So this is a company that has really tried this product. And actually, I, I would have to say this is the one thing that excites me the most. We look at the sales and the orders that we are now getting. These are repeat orders. These are sales that people that have tried the product, understand the product, are getting great results and reordering product. And to me, that tells the whole story. Definitely. So now let's talk about the Vera premium carbon credit. So you must be excited about the premium carbon credit that is currently in final review on the Vera website. How confident are you that the carbon credit will be granted? And in what ways do you see the carbon credit affecting Dynacert if granted? Well, uh, I'll let JP step in here in a minute. But first of all, uh, I have 100% confidence, matter of fact, 110% confidence that we will get the Spira. Uh, it has taken longer than I would have ever expected. Uh, the one thing I've been told by many experts that we've gone the right road, stay the course. Vera is the most widely recognized and the most valued carbon credits in the world. And uh, they've already approved the methodology. It's just a matter of this final step of approval. But how do I see it affecting? It affects things in many ways. We have some of the largest companies in the world, largest truck fleets and and logistics companies in the world that want our technology. But they say the day we get the carbon credits, they want the carbon credits. They want the bragging rights of it. You know, obviously it fits ESG perfectly, uh, but also the monetary value of it. And the way we, the way this is designed, at the end of the day, uh, Dinosaur will maintain 50% of the carbon credits and the end user will get 50% of the carbon credits. So, I mean, I see this as the razor blade you know, to the company, I see this as a reoccurring revenue stream that I believe is going to be massive. JP, do you have? Yeah, well, just to perhaps explain it a little bit better, uh, the, the, our carbon credit program uh, is based on the end user using our hydrogen units, and every year we'll be able to apply for carbon credits on the carbon that has been not emitted or saved from being emitted in the atmosphere. And we will be processing these applications. Um, so it, it's important from a financial and valuation perspective to understand when we sell one unit, this is a annual base revenue year after year of carbon credits, a stream of cash flows that is coming in over time. Right. So if you, in, in, if, if you make assumptions on the values of carbon credits and how they're blowing up in prices, uh, you can see that very quickly, uh, it, it virtually doubles the value of dinosaur to uh, the minute we have carbon credits. And just one other quick note on that. Uh, you, you had talked about the premium carbon credit, and we've actually, both the independent auditors and Vera has said that more than once. And the reason being that this is 100% data-driven. I mean, this is because we also have, with our technology, we have the hydrolytica. The hydrolytica is is uh, like a like a fleet management system on steroids, but it is collecting this data where it shows in real time the fuel savings, the reduction in emissions, the reduction in greenhouse gases, converted to CO two E. Uh, so with this, it is one hundred percent data driven. There's no there's no guesswork involved. I mean, it, it is one hundred percent accurate of what the actual reduction in the greenhouse gases are. And, and why do you miss saying about has a premium value, or well, why third parties have said that, is because many other carbon credits in the world today, 
they make estimates on these trees will grow by how much over time or have grown by how much. This forest has sequestered so much carbon in the atmosphere. In our case, we measure in real time through, as Jim said, a data-driven system that this amount of carbon dioxide it has not been released in the atmosphere as a result of our technology. So it, it's a very robust, certain uh, way to measure the reduction of carbon credits. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk future projects and growth. So what future projects or partnerships should investors look forward to, particularly with Cypher Neutron and other strategic initiatives? Well, JP, why don't you uh, throw your opinion in there and then I'm sure I'll top it off with something, but yeah, so we, we obviously, until they're announced, we're not going to say anything, but we certainly, from a strategic point of view at Dynast, are, are always looking, at, and as Jim said before, his vision was always to build uh, a hydrogen economy company. So we are looking at all the hydrogen technologies that are out there uh, on a daily and weekly basis uh, to look at acquisitions or branching out or whatever. Closer to home, uh, we have a new president now, uh, that's uh, uh, Bert uh, Cooper, who uh, is uh, very connected to the OVM uh, diesel engine manufacturers. And in the short term, I would hope and expect we will be seeing a more of a presence in Europe. He's from Germany. Uh, we're going to be seeing a much more bigger footprint of our activities in the Arctic. And just so you understand why that's important to Dinosaur, uh, we've had a big footprint out west, as you mentioned before, in Western Canada and in the oil patch or, or in North America. We have a big footprint of sales in South America with open pit mining. Uh, but the European market loves this, that they, they have, they, they, they have a, a big appetite for saving uh, emissions in the atmosphere. And we now have a, a, an added presence in Europe. That so that's in the short term. This is something to watch for. Oh, that's great. So, with the recent appointment of Bernd Kruper as president and director, how do you envision this expanded leadership team driving global growth and innovation for Dinosaur? Well, as JP had, had mentioned, I mean, you know, Bernd is uh, first of all he has spent his life in the diesel engine world and in the large diesel engine world. He is recognized worldwide. Uh, I am very honored that he has joined our team. Uh, he is uh, actually in the process of expanding our management team and everything like that. And with that, we are a global company. We are already in 55 countries of the world. But I think, you know, with his expanded uh, network, I mean, I always believe you know, the values in the network and, and you look at the network of people and professional people that he is now bringing to the table, including but not limited to a lot of government officials. I mean, just in the last week or so, I mean, he's had multiple meetings with governments uh, worldwide. And uh, I, I think this is, I firmly believe that Dynasert is at the brink of major explosion here, you know, for growth. Exciting times ahead. So looking ahead, what are the key strategic goals for Dinosaur over the next few years and how do you plan to achieve them? Well, first of all, uh, sales are number one. Uh, I do believe that, you know, we are going to see sales uh, grow and grow ex exponentially. Like I said, we have, you know, now large companies around the world and Jean-Pierre talked about mining companies. We've got major mining companies that have utilize our product and tra tried and tested our products that are coming back now with large orders. I mean, these are going to be, you know, a game changer for the company. Uh, but, you know, as we continue to grow this, uh, you know, obviously with our expansion in Cypher Neutron and other opportunities that we are exploring now, I think that, uh, you know, we are literally so well poised. And then, you know, I can't stop thinking about or talking about the carbon credits. Uh, this has been a painful road to go down because it has taken much longer than ever expected, but we are so close. And I believe that this is going to be such a major, major 
turnaround and catalyst for this for our company, not just here in Canada, but globally. Uh, I have multiple calls and emails daily from around the globe. How soon are we going to have the carbon credits? How soon can we start taking advantage of this? And I really do believe that this is going to just see things grow. Another growth vertical, by the way, that we haven't mentioned yet is uh, government utilities or utilities in general. Uh, obviously, the world population is pressuring your governments to do something about uh, the GHP emissions. And we have, at that assert, in the last couple of years, uh, kind of a major penetration in, uh, in the utility users, utilities that have diesel engines and their service vehicles that are adopting our technology. And one of them has been announced publicly, and that's Electra in Ontario, one of the largest uh, utilities of its time in North America. So, and they got repeat orders as well. So, it's the government market is also a very important for you. Know. There's two other areas where I really do believe it's going to be, uh, you know, a major move for the company. And I'm talking very large diesel engines, but I'm talking locomotive, uh, which we are currently in talks and negotiations with companies, but also, you know, the major shipping. And this is something that, we're not there yet. This is something we're just working towards. But Aaron, you know, you look at one container ship, and this is something that the majority of people don't understand or don't even know. You know, we get so caught up, and the government's got so caught up in the last couple of years about EV, and we got to change things like that. But, you know, one container ship, these big ships put out the equivalent of 50 million cars per year in pollution. You take 17 container ships is equivalent to every vehicle on the roads worldwide today. And that's something that so far has ran under the radar screen. And we have a technology that can make such a huge difference. Now, these are massive engines, uh, but I do believe you know that is a market that we are going after. And uh, that is my vision, you know, is to, to penetrate that market and, uh, it's going to be a game changer for them. It's interesting. I had a, a talk with a major shipping company and talked about 10% fuel savings. And I said, you know, that 10% fuel savings will pay for itself. And they said, you know, Jim, the reality is if we can eliminate 10% of our fuel, we can increase our payload by 10%. And that's worth more to them than the fuel savings. But the emissions to me is the major game changer. And like I said, there is not another technology in the world that I am aware of that reduces the emissions or the toxic gases of the emissions near as significant as what our technology does today. Fantastic, gentlemen. Well, Jim, John Pierre, it's been a pleasure learning about the company and um, best of luck. You've got a lot going on. I wish you a successful year and we'll have to have you back on for an update. I'm looking forward to it.